Well, it's very exciting to hear the news that another Cantabrian has taken out the New Zealand Gardener magazine Gardener of the Year, Alan Jones. Well done. How are you? Thank you, Megan. Great. Excited? Yeah, well, it's getting, it's starting to sink in now that we have won it, yes. Yeah, I bet it is too, because of course you were on a couple of months ago uh, as a finalist, which was great in itself, and then the news has been announced that you've taken out the award. You sure have. And actually, we need to show this award, don't we, because oh, it's very special. Beautiful, yes. If I can, this is the, oh, the big award here, so hopefully the camera can pick that up, but it's just gorgeous. But you were saying the uh, Canterbury winner from last year, sadly, and the earthquake lost hers. Uh, uh, she came out to our presentation yesterday at the school and it was an honour to meet her too. I hadn't met her before. Mm. And uh, she said yes, she lost hers in the earthquake the other day. Mm. Well, hopefully they'll get another one for her. Yeah. Well, she's not getting that one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's Jonesy's. Yeah, absolutely. So, Alan, tell us a little bit about it. For viewers that miss you the first time, of course, you um, do amazing work with the gardens at Leiston um, School. So, tell us how that, that kind of eventuated. What's the story behind that? About the getting them going. Mm. Oh, I was just a, retired on the buses, and, and or well, semi retired. Still doing a bit of bus work, but not as school work. And um, I just, just felt that the gardens needed a bit of TLC. But being a garden all my life, uh, I just felt it was something I could do for children. I like working with the children. Mm. They're just uh, absolutely great. They, so. mu they must... Um, the, the wonderful thing about children is that they really absorb all that knowledge and information straight away, don't they? Like a sponge. Mm. They're, they're actually telling me what to do now. <laughs> telling it's... you how to get your good spuds going, are they? <laughs> well, they are. They're going home now and telling their parents. They actually... Well, I did say in an article where um, two decades, I think, have been missed on gardening. Mm. because of um, going out the door. But now um, it's not the parents teaching the children. At this stage, the children are going home teaching their parents how So to it's kind of role reversal, really, At this stage it has, yes. Because I know you've said you were, you were quite astounded at the lack of knowledge that children have these days um, with gardening and, and where their fruit and vegetables come from. And it's not just, you know, appearing on the supermarket shelf. Well, it's because, once again, it, it's one of those things. They, they put them in the supermarkets. It makes people so easy. Mums are working, so it's so easy to pop in and grab a cabbage on the way home from work and mm. throw it in the pot when they get home, and that's it. Uh, but middle gardening it takes up a wee bit of time, but it, it's great uh, therapy if you. That's exactly right. Get out there at night time and spend a half an hour in the garden, and, and um, it's really great. And mm. if you've got a nagging wife, well, it's the best place for you <laughs> out in the garden. <laughs> and your worries may soon be forgotten. They soon. Uh, <laughs> You've had a lot of help as well with the community. They've been right behind you, haven't they? With the community has been fantastic. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, you know you see in papers where schools want money for four hundred thousand or something to, to do their gardens and at least and we've done them all for nothing. Wow and that's all thanks to everybody that's contributed. That's thanks to the community yep they've just been so wonderful you just mentioned something and it, 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 next day it's arrived. It's just there. It's just magic. there falls out of the sky. Um, and I know what happens to the vegetables if they're not eaten with the school children they're passed on to someone else aren't they? Yeah well at the moment we're, we've got a wee stand there and we're selling to the parents Great. to raise money for their um, uh, seeds for next year and their potting mixes and all that mm. um, and what we don't sell if we get a bit of an influx which we've got the seven gardens going now so there's quite a bit of vegetables coming so there's through. seven now? Seven going wow. now and they're mm. all, all good, looking really good. Blooming? And, yeah we had our first feed the other day uh, on uh, Friday TV when we were out and we uh, had lunch with them Served and they them really enjoyed it too. So where do some of the other vegetables go? So the other vegetables we sell them and if we've still got a surplus then we'll, we'll take them down to the St David's um, church oh, group that, uh, there's eight houses down there and there's uh, you know people down there and they don't got gardens so we just take some silver bit down there or, or give them to some person that really, really needs them yeah so someone else can enjoy the benefits yeah, that's of true. fresh yeah. veg mm. uh, now that we've got you here Jonesy we have to ask you for a few tips because of course you are the New Zealand Gardener Gardener of the Year so talk to me about tomatoes what advice can you give us on tomatoes at the moment well because tomato season's coming in there um, if you've got a tunnel house uh, in at my a tunnel house uh, when I delateral if because um, you do take your lats out and you might have one that's a wee bit bigger than your finger I just dig a wee hole in the soil and poke that in there within a week it's it's um, got a root system on it and then you can go and plant them in your garden and there's a tomato plant just like that and wow. it's it's off the laterals um, at the moment the school are lucky the children are selling them around there my laterals I poke them there and I put them <laughs> in a wee pot and send them to the kids and say go and sell that and make some money for you Brilliant. So that's something really easy and it just takes off. Very, very easy. It just takes off. You don't have to put any stuff with it. Good to know. Hole in the ground. Poke it in. Now you were saying there might be a problem with white fly at the moment, is that right? White fly is very bad at the moment, yes. And um, so what can we I'm, do about that? Well, I'm, I'm an organic gardener. I don't mm -hmm. use uh, sprays, so I just use fish fertiliser. 
uh, if you do put fish fertilizer, say a tablespoon of fish fertilizer to a tablespoon of soap, liquid, and say four litres of water, spray weekly, and um, white fly problem gone. I make it a wee bit stronger. I don't put um, luck strip in mine, I just make mine a wee bit stronger because I use fertiliser, fish fertilise all my vegetables, so I'm actually fertilising them as well as killing the bug, uh, the white fly. So you use fish fertiliser and then your own um, concoction? Yeah, mm. well, it's just water, fish yeah. fertilised and water I do, oh, but right, I make so. it a wee bit stronger. Yeah. And they don't like that either, but the vegetables like it because it makes them grow. Brilliant. And, and we're going to be healthier for it because uh, it's not a chemical. There you go. You hit it here first with the New Zealand Gardener of the Year. Second time in a row to have a Cantabrian. So well done, Alan Jones. It's just fantastic news. And well done to everybody who took the time to vote as well with the New Zealand Gardener magazine. And there you can see Alan hard at work. Alan, thank you very much. What a pleasure. Is it? Oh, how gorgeous. <laughs> I bet he's proud of his granddad. Oh, he's really proper. Yeah. Rightly so, too.